A model steamboat named Edith. Part 10, soldering and finishing the water tank. I'm currently in the outer part of the workshop, which is very near the door, and it's just as well because this is not a pleasant thing to do unless you have plenty of ventilation. This is the flux I'm going to use. It's commercial flux that I got from a plumber's merchants. It's important to use the right type of flux for this job. This is not silver solder flux, that's entirely different. So what I'm doing at the moment is just brushing plenty of this around all the joints on the inside of the tank. And here comes the important part. This is the blowtorch. And you will notice that I am not using a large burner head on the blowtorch. I don't really need that much heat for this job. This is soft solder, not silver soldering. So the solder melts at a much lower temperature. The type of solder that you use is important also. This stuff's known as plumber's solder. And I bought these sticks of solder from Black Gates Engineering where I buy most of my model engineering supplies. This type of solder behaves slightly differently to electrical solder. When I first apply the heat to the tank, the first thing to melt is the flux, and this flows into all the gaps between the brass angle and the brass sheet. Then as I increase the temperature by holding the blowtorch in place for slightly longer, then what happens is the flux cleans the metal and I can apply the solder. The trick in doing this is to keep the blowtorch moving. What you need to do is just apply some localised heat to a point on the tank, then when the solder melts and flows into the joint, just move the blowtorch onto the next bit. In this part of the clip, you can see the principle clearly. The first thing that happens when I apply the heat to the tank is the flux melts, and very quickly the tank gets hot enough to melt the solder, so I apply the solder to the tank, and it really does flow very well. It's possible to solder like this a lot neater than I'm doing it, but it's only inside a water tank, so it's not important. This is a good tip and it's fairly essential. The brush that I used to apply the flux in the first place is in a water pot at the side of the bench. And here I'm using the brush to smooth out the solder. And also this brush removes some of the burnt flux from the work. At the left hand side of the tank on the bench you can see a plastic pot with a brush in it. And I keep the brush in this pot of water just to keep it cool. So that when I use it on the work the bristles last a bit longer. And I'd better just mention that the brush that you need to use for this job needs to be a bristle type brush, not one of the modern ones that use plastic bristles. They would just melt and you would have a sticky mess inside the tank, which is not really what you need. Depending upon how well the tank was made in the first place and how closely together the panels were fitted, you may find that a lot of the solder starts to run out of the sides and the corners onto the floor. You may also find that for some inexplicable reason, when doing this job, your feet do start to get hot. By careful control of the blowtorch and keeping it moving, you will find that the solder sticks to the metal OK, and if you continue applying the solder with the heat removed, suddenly the solder takes on a plastic consistency, and this is very good for gap filling. If you overheat the work, a lot of bad things are going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is the tank will distort. The second thing that's going to happen is the flux will turn black, and a lot of the solder will fall straight through the joints onto the floor just where your feet are. And that explains why your feet suddenly become quite warm. In this clip the tank is upside down and you can see that there's a drip. It's not a drip anymore because it's the wrong way up. So here I'm heating the point of drip just to remove it. Once it's melted I use the brush to brush it off the metal. And in this clip I'm illustrating what happens if you put the brush into the flame the bristles start to disappear fairly rapidly, so it's a good job that it's wet in the first place. At this stage, I'm just having a bit of a play. I'm using some electrical solder. Electrical solder usually has the flux in a resin-type core, and it works perfectly well. It fills the gap, no problem at all, but it's not as good for jobs like this as proper plumber's solder. And once again, removing the brush from the water pot, I use it to clean away the flux residue. The next thing to do before you go any further is to let the work cool completely. And after you can easily pick up the tank by hand, it's time to carefully place it in the acid bath. I'm using a pair of pliers because I don't want to put my hand into the acid itself. The tank floated for a while, surprisingly, but it soon sank to the bottom because the acid was coming in through the two water unions. There it goes. I left it in the acid bath for a few hours, but I must admit that the acid was not very effective against the residue of this flux, because the residue is quite greasy. The main purpose of the acid was to chemically clean the brass, and now it's time for the manual clean-up operation. 
I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite for this, and the idea is to scour the surface to key it for the paint. Before I did this, though, I took it into the garden and I used the hose pipe to blast off what little was remaining of the flux inside the tank. I had contemplated using the dishwasher in the house, but owing to the fact that this is lead solder, I didn't think that was too smart an idea. Two or three of the holes around the top got blocked up with solder, so I drilled them out, re-threaded them, and in this clip I'm fixing the top in place using some 8BA dome head bolts, or machine screws, whatever you wish to call them. I haven't used any sealant underneath the lid, because the tank's not going to be filled right to the top anyway. And for the viewers who wrote in, concerned about the water sloshing about in the tank, please be aware this is not an ocean-going vessel and it's not going to be going round Cape Horn any time soon. This is the water bypass pipe, and it's to allow the water to return to the tank if it's not been pumped into the boiler. More about this in future episodes. With the top in place, I'm using the piece of scotch Sprite to scratch the surface all over. I'm now going to paint it. Time for a top tip. It's a good idea to make one of these. All it is is a piece of plywood with four panel pins hammered into it, and you can see what it's used for, and the logic being that the paint will of course stick to the tips of the four panel pins, but it's not the end of the world. I use it like this. Paint the underside first, place the painted surface on the four panel pins. There's minimum marking of the paint, and it allows the paint underneath to dry without sticking to anything. This first very thin coat of paint is Precision Paints Etch Primer, and if you read the instructions it says, do not spray too heavily, you need to see the metal through the paint. I took the trouble to actually read the instructions on the can, and it's surprising. It said that, make sure you can see the metal through the paint, only apply a thin coating, and allow 24 hours before overcoating. So 24 hours later, I sprayed it with a satin black top coat. This is not very expensive paint and you can get it at most DIY outlets in England. I think it's okay, it sprays on very well and gives a good finish. And don't forget, when painting, the general rule is, several thin ones are far better than one thick one. And that statement refers to coats of paint, not girlfriends. So once I've painted the bottom, and that's not a girlfriend joke either, I can turn the tank over onto the four pins which supports it and allows the paint to dry underneath and I can commence the painting of the sides and the top. It's very difficult to stop yourself from spraying too much paint onto components but fight the urge and back off. Otherwise you're very likely to get drips and runs and sags which look very unsightly. Here's a shot of the paint that I'm using and it really is okay. So what I'm doing is painting part of the tank, rotating the whole thing painting the next side, and so on and so forth, although really I'm doing this for the video, I should leave it slightly longer for the paint to dry in between coats. I'm going to conclude this episode with some serious health and safety warnings. When using lead solder, please be aware that this actually contains lead, and lead is poisonous, and also when soft soldering is shown in the video, make sure you do it in a very well ventilated area. In this video I'm showing the outer part of my workshop which is six feet away from an open garage door. And also when spray painting or painting generally make sure you do that in a well ventilated area. Personal protective equipment PPE should always be worn. It's all common sense really. And on that note I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.